5 bucks. Punch Kids. Life Jacket. Mirror Fart. Yes, we go! Yes, we go! 11. 11. 11 shows. Mmm. Goddamn! God, we're moving. <laughs> moving right along. Time is progressing. Uh, welcome to Is Me Dumb. I'm Joe Paisley. I'm Dan Cummins. Yes. And oh, we uh, are. Hold on. Okay. I'm, Fred, I'm Fred Flintstone. You still Sorry. are. Sorry. Which is great. Okay. And what if it just, I mean, we joked around about that never stopping. Mm -hmm. What if it really just never did? It's pretty funny. <laughs> Four years from now, <laughs> just Fred Flintstone. <laughs> right. Hey, Fred. <laughs> you on the street. Hey, hey Fred. Hey, hey, Fred. Hello, Mr. Fred Flintstone. <laughs> you look a lot like Dan. Where's, where's Barney? Where's Barney? I'm right. I'll be Barney. I got to. <laughs> I fit, I fit the look. Okay, Fred and Barney. <laughs> Fred and Barney. Fucking <laughs> put it on the list. <laughs> New episodes of Is Me Dumb every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. Goal, as always, mm -hmm. come on, come out on the other side of this episode being less dumb than we were going in. Exactly. And I think about stuff mm -hmm. that we cover yeah. throughout my daily life. And I do actually believe I'm not replicating them because I know of how, how dumb and how, or how potentially dumb the situation could go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's improving me for sure. Because I know I'm going to confess any dumb things that I do, right. so I'm more uh, aware now to try to do less dumb things. Right, exactly. To not set myself up for sh uh, being shamed. <laughs> yeah. And keep sending in the segment content. You can do that at dumb at isbedumb.com, whatever it may be. We're getting a, a lot more sliver of hopes. Oh, that's good. And I'm so excited for today's sliver of hope. Yeah. Not only because it uh, comes out of the great state of Idaho. But there's a lot of people. It's brand new. Okay. And the story just keeps getting better and better. So I'm excited to share that with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So again, send that into dumb at isbedumb.com. Everything else, you can send that to info at isbedumb.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at isbedumb. And we've got uh, some new merch in the store right now. We Yay, talked about new it. New merch. Talked about it last week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can check that out at badmagicmerch.com or get there and see all of our websites. If you just want nothing right. but Is We Dumb, guess right. what? You can get it. You can get it. Sweet. Isbedumb.gov. Dot com. Gov. Dot com. Dot com. We don't okay. Go. okay. Please. <laughs> we just get sued. Uh, all the links for the uh, videos or whatever we cover, and definitely we'll post that up today for the To You From Internet, and you can find that in the episode description. Um, I, I'm going to apologize for something, because I'm doing it right now. Okay. And I just want to point out that I'm not on drugs. Okay. I'm not on meth. Right. But a lot of people are very uh, concerned with how bouncy my legs are. Oh, yeah. You get the, what's that I, syndrome uh, called? Bouncy, uh, bouncy leg guy. Syndrome? <laughs> there is a term for it, actually. It's like, uh, oh, it's, it's something like syndrome, I think. I heard Zach. Drummer's leg. Drummer's leg. Is that it? sounds fucking sick. Drummer. Like, oh. metal drummer. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, the technical term is tremor <laughs> tremor legs? I was like, fuck, never mind. I'm never changing. There is something. And you know what's funny? is like, I haven't been doing as much. I did it for years. And because huh? Lindsay would always point it out. She, she would reach over like a restaurant and just put her hand on my knee. Not in like an affectionate way, but like, stop. Shaking your leg. Can you fuck off? Stop moving. Stop right. twitching. But I uh, <laughs> now I'm realizing I'm like, for some reason I haven't done it as much. But I got called out on Time Suck, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago for the same thing. People really? watch the videos and just see me kind of vibrating. Right. It's like, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It's You're just fine? a fidgety guy. Yeah, fidgety. Uh, Lindsay yeah. did have a funny idea yeah. that I, need, I should strap a little baby. To my leg, <laughs> so at least like I'm I'm bouncing an infant mm -hmm. like throughout the entire show. Mm -hmm. I want to be like get jackhammer pants. Oh so yeah, you're work, it, yeah, you're doing a little construction project on more, the side. Yeah, I'm always I'm always on the on the job. You're as my mom would say, you're squirming Herman. <laughs> Oh come on! You're just a little squirming Herman. Fine, you're twitchy, <laughs> twitchy little guy. Uh, well, let's get the let's get the blood flowing. Okay, with our very super most important starting question. The very super most important starting question. All right, get the comedy muscles loosened up. This is a fun one, I oh, might I say. I like fun ones. Yeah. All right, Zach, go ahead and bring it up. Would you rather fight <laughs> 200 third graders in hand-to-hand -hand combat or a bear, but you get a crowbar? <laughs> <laughs> fight 200... This is very different. Fight 200 third graders mm -hmm. in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So you don't get a weapon. No weapon against the, the 200 of them. It's a lot. That's like a or whole a bear, grade. but with a crowbar. Right. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, my kids, I, I kick the shit out of my kids. Like, Pepper is in, four, well, in fourth grade now. Right. And I could still beat her up, I feel like. Yeah. So. <laughs> I feel like, yeah. I mean, I'm not like, you know, claiming to be like uh, some super tough guy, mm -hmm. but I, I am confident that I could fuck up a third grader. Right. Like, I, I feel like any third grader that I got like one solid kick mm -hmm. against. They're d they're down for the rest of the fight. <laughs> they're going to be out. One punch, they're down for the rest of the fight. But I'm also uh, getting a little older, and I don't trust my body as much. 
and I could go, I could, I could go through a hundred of them. Mm-hmm. The things are just fine. Then I tweak my knee. Oh, now they, now it's like fucking sharks and they smell blood in the water. Yeah, you're down. And when, and once they pile on you, I'm having flashbacks to getting beaten up in grade school right now when, when I was like, I don't know, second grade or something like that. And I have the weird, it's the weirdest memory. There's like this older kid. I mean, he's probably just like what third grade. Uh huh. And he like sicked these little first grade toadies of his on me at recess. <laughs> yeah. And so I was getting attacked by like four of these slightly smaller kids, and it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it was like they were piling on, and I would throw them off of me, and then another one would attack me, and they'd scratch at me and stuff. <laughs> so I'm having like flashbacks to like how terrifying that was, yeah. and now it's multiplied by hun- like a couple hundred. I think a big part of it is how smart are the third graders. Do they have weapons? <laughs> well, sure. But I meant, are they going to act like a like a normal action movie where they all wait their turn to get their oh, shit rocked? Oh, that would be ideal. Or are they going to, I got a single file lunch line and mm-hmm. they just like walk up and you just punch them in the face mm-hmm. and the next one comes mm-hmm. up? Um, or I, do they know I, how they have a, a strategy? Right. Or are they going to zombie rush you and like jump off each other's backs to cover you? Then you're, then you're right. done. But they're also dumb third graders and you can just <laughs> be like face push and then... And you got to think of the emotion. Marry their mom. You got to think of the emotional angle of: Is it going to be easier psychologically to go hard on a bear with a crowbar? Yeah. Or go, or go hard with your fists on little kids? <laughs> is there a prize on the end? What if there's like a like a cash money prize for kicking the shit out of a bunch of third graders? <laughs> my my initial gut response was: I have to go for the bear because I, I don't want to beat up kids. But then I'm thinking like, they fucking signed up for that. <laughs> they they're, know, like, they they're, they're coming at me. Uh huh. They get a prize. You, they get right. They get smarties or something. <laughs> well, but, but I'm just saying, like, I, like I don't, I don't think you have to feel guilty for hitting these kids and kicking them as hard as you can because <laughs> they're trying to hurt you. Like, and, and there's enough of them where it's a yeah. real threat. So I think if you can, if you can get over that psychological barrier of like, fuck those kids, uh-huh. like they want to kill me you. or them. Yeah, they want to kill you. Right. I think if it's a me or them mentality, if I can get my head in the right space, I think I'd rather fight the kids. And there have been, and I have more. I have more pent up anger towards children than I do bears because <laughs> yeah. bears have never interfered with my life in frustrating ways. Yeah. Lots of kids have. Yeah. And I don't, and a bear, what do you, what's a crowbar going to do? I know. It, I mean, you get, you get one, you got to be close to use oh. a crowbar. So even if you, you give them a little bonk, I mean, there's people that shoot bears 10 times I know, and the bear still kills them. I read this book, uh, fourth, fifth grade, Alaskan bear tales. And it like scared the shit out of me. I think there was a, a series of them, and it was just uh, exactly what it sounds like. It was just all stories from Alaska, all stories of people getting, you know, grizzly bears, not right. black bears, Kodiak bears. And Alaska bears are different uh, than bears gigantic. everywhere else. Yeah. These gigantic brown bears, Kodiak bears are like the are like the biggest. Uh-huh. They're massive salmon-fed motherfuckers. And these crazy stories of like, you know, like someone would barely survive after they got chewed on for a while and played dead, and they're all mangled, and their fucking yep. eye is missing. <laughs> and then they find, and then they, the forest rangers finally kill this bear, and they find out it had like eight old bullets in it. <laughs> like people have been trying to kill it for 10 years. I was just hoping they're you like said it monsters. had like Moby Dick style had eight old people in it. <laughs> like they're all bunch of skeletons in his stomach. Thank you. But <laughs> I've been in here for 40 years. <laughs> Thank Still you, alive. Ranger. Thank you, Ranger. Some old prospector. Well, back time you got me out of that bear's belly. I've been in there since 1867. Got, I've got gold to find. <laughs> I found a gold nugget and they kept finding more gold nuggets and I walked right into the bear's mouth. <laughs> I've been waiting since 1872. He duped me. <laughs> the good part is, is uh, somehow you don't age inside here, right. so I'm still 43 years old. Uh, it's a bear, little bear time machine. <laughs> bear time machine. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go with the kids. Ideally, and you know what? And I'm gonna, if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to beat up kids, they're coming for me. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to give myself permission to really like get into it. Uh, I, I like the idea of like maybe they don't strategize that well. <laughs> Just wait. Oh, I, I hope I hope that there's like a line in my mind. I want to punch one of them in their fucking stupid kid faces, <laughs> and I want to send that kid into the kid behind him, and then like like a domino. I want to take like five, out. knock his teeth out. I knock out in in you know in like kids that age. A lot of some of their teeth are baby teeth. So I don't even fucking need them. Whatever, <laughs> and and then like just get knock out a whole row of them. And I just picture how satisfying it would feel to do like a hard sidekick <laughs> and launch a, like a 50 pound kid. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> a good eight, 10 feet through the air. Give him a wedgie first. Oh. Bah! Swirly and then punch him. And then there's that, the psychological angle. Because yeah. then you could like, you could clear some space. And if, and if they're now a little more hesitant because they've seen you beat up some of their friends, <laughs> then you get one. Oh my God. You get one, yeah. one boy, and you grab him by his underwear in the back and you fucking spin. <laughs> And you let the centrifugal force just keep spinning him until it finally rips his underwear and he flies off. And you're like, who else fucking?
fucking wants that. I'll fucking destroy all your underwear. <laughs> you, you can, oh, you can just dominate. You can feel so powerful. I just keep picturing in my head, like my daughter, Pepper. Yeah. And I can see her in her string bean body. Mm-hmm. And I can mm-hmm. imagine like kicking it as hard as I can. <laughs> and it's so violent. It's so violent. Because, but, I don't know. But, but honestly. The bear's going to kill me. I'm going to go with the kids too. Kind of satisfying though, right? You're <laughs> I like, mean, oh, I, I love my kid. I'm but not going to say she doesn't deserve it. But also, it would Sometimes. feel, if you knew she wasn't going to die, you'd yeah. like, that felt kind of good. That did feel <laughs> you know what? Good. All right, let's go do whatever you want. Because <laughs> I've been doing whatever you want anyway without kicking you. Right. And now I feel a little bit better about doing whatever you want. <laughs> I want to like get one of these kids and swing them around like helicopter style and use them as a club. As a weapon. To, to, yeah, to like take out a lot of the other kids. And you can do cool moves because they're so light. <laughs> Little Jimmy grabbing by both his legs. Oh, I can smash bam, another bam, kid. Bat him. Oh, and you could pick up one of the kids... And you could like, you could just do like cr- crazy alpha shit, like, like hold him above your head and then just fucking huck him into the crowd of kids. <laughs> Who's next? Yeah! Who's next, motherfuckers? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's kick the shit out of some kids. Boom. Boom. Yeah, the bear I, would for sure kill me. I, it's just, I mean. That was an emotional journey for me. At first, I was like, I feel kind of guilty. And then by the end, I'm like, I can't wait to fight these fucking kids. I can't wait to punch a kid in the face. God, I want to punch a couple hundred kids in their faces. <laughs> my whole brain, I was like, oh, is my left, can I, is my, how's my left kick? Mm-hmm. Like, how's my right kick? I'm just kind of, I know. I got to, I got to get my, my karate moves up to speed. I know. I've had some knee problems. It's like, I, I feel like a little hesitant about planting off of it to really right. give me a kick. I'm worried about my flexibility. Yeah. But, yeah. But You'll it, do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, fine. fine. I'll do it. Let's beat the shit out of some okay, kids. Okay, fine. Set it up. Good. Pay per view. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's move on to the <laughs> inward part of the episode <laughs> with Is We Dumb? <laughs> is We Dumb? Uh, <laughs> thank you for everyone who wrote in and, and told me how stupid I was <laughs> for hanging on to the back of a car. I'm telling you, and ground off half my face. That was last week's story. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, man, it was just a popular way of life. Just down to Sun Valley. You just, just kind of did do. it. You just did it. You just got it's one insane. place or the other hanging onto the back of a bumper. Like, it's, I, I love it. I think of Back to the Future when Marty McFly would hang onto the back of cars on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah, I do just, that too. But no skateboard. <laughs> right. Like, it's just so insane to me. You're just using uh, Heelys. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just healing your way down the road. Going to work, Mom. <laughs> we uh, Be safe. Love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> just going 60. <laughs> Smoking Heelys. Sparks flying up from your Heelys. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk about how dumb you are. Okay. Now, I, I, yeah, there's something coming up pretty dumb that I'm going to do. When my son, Kyler, who's now 14, was 12. Okay. The summer after he turned 12. Ago, yeah. A couple years ago. I took him on this mountain hike across the river from Riggins, Idaho. Just like like it's right there. It's like the main kind of little peak and they're mountains. In town. Yeah. Like they're mountain mountains. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I've climbed uh, mountains on the other side of the river, on the Riggins side, uh, behind town, like above the cemetery, many times. Uh, we would do it just after school. Like, it wouldn't be a big deal. It would take you a couple hours to get to the top. You wouldn't bring water. You wouldn't bring anything. Right. You wouldn't prepare in any way. You just walk, go up there. And I just forgot about perspective, I guess. All right. In my brain, the mountain across the river was, like, a little bigger, but not much bigger. <laughs> and so I prepared not at all. I picture you, like, if you're looking at it from an airplane, right. it just looks a little bigger. Exactly. It's, it's a little of... bit bigger, but it can't be that. Okay, so what? One took two hours. This will probably take two and a half. Right. <laughs> And everybody eyeball it. Yep, just eyeball it. <laughs> Didn't really do an investigating other than that. Uh, everyone in my family is like, no. Like my grandparents, like my mom, they're like, no, it's a lot bigger. And I'm like, nah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's fine. And I just, my wife, Lindsay, everyone was like, I think you should prepare. I okay. think you should. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. Not Did, gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Did get a backpack with like a little sleeping bag because the thing was the trip was we hike up to the top of this mountain, we camp on top of the hill. All right. And then we come down. And we brought like games, like board games. We thought we were gonna be up there in a couple hours and then just fucking chill. Living in luxury. Oh, living in luxury on the tent. <laughs> right. Um, no. Uh, we go to the grocery store before the hike. I, I only wanted to bring literally one bottle of water. This is an overnight <laughs> hike. I just wasn't, I, I'm not a planner on those kind of things. I'm like, no, we good. And, oh, and, my, and Lindsay's like, are you stupid? <laughs> She's like, you you need so much more water. Now. I'm like, fine, I'll bring two things of water. <laughs> two, I picture like the two tiny little water two bottles. <laughs> they were decent size, but yeah, but just two Snack bottles back. of water. Yeah. And then she's like, what do you want to get for food? And I wasn't hungry at the time. And I'm like, I don't know, we'll be, we'll be good. And I'm like, I'm not hungry. Right I'm not hungry right now. <laughs> so we bring a couple granola bars. And uh, we just get a whole bunch of chicken tenders, like two pounds of chicken tenders. True. And throw them in a bag, throw them in the backpack, and then we start hiking. And maybe like an hour in, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I've, <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. Yeah. Because you have to, like, to get to this hill, it's a couple hours of hiking on these other ridges just to get to the bottom of that ridge. Right. And then you get to the bottom of that ridge, and then you go, and then there's no trail. 
And it became this dramatic thing where uh, <laughs> we're rationing the water. We're both like really dehydrated. And then you make it to, and the sun was starting to set and on this, it's way steeper than it looks. There's no trail. It's this, uh, this cheat grass all over the place. It's yep. real slick. Mm -hmm. And I realized I'm like, oh shit, there's not enough time to get back down the hill before dark. Uh, so we have to get to the top before dark because we, otherwise we're just stuck on the side of this mountain. Right. You can't just, we can't put a tent up. It's right. way too steep. Right. Like, uh, and so then the last half an hour as the sun was setting, we were on our hands and knees crawling, pulling ourselves up with grass. <laughs> like, uh, I, I set up the tent without standing because my legs were shot. Yeah. Like they were so dead. I just laying down on my side. <laughs> put this tent up there was no flats ground up there we didn't even think about that we were it was still steep so we were smushed together on one side of the little tent the wind was whipping around it started to rain i didn't look into the weather <laughs> what the fuck? it's fucking poor it was a nightmare <laughs> fucking nightmare and, Ky and kyler was scared like it was blo the wind blowing so hard he's like are we gonna be okay and i'm like uh, and i'm like yeah know. but in my head i'm like i don't know aren't we having fun <laughs> isn't this fun <laughs> We didn't eat the chicken. Love you. The chicken was fucking nasty. It was all like congee. <laughs> it was like like it, it sweated in the bag for oh, hours. Okay. And so it was this mush of chicken. So then we just made a joke out of it and we just threw it all around our campsite. Just to make sure some bears would come. Just to make sure some bears would come. And so that was so now I'm doing the same uh hiking trip and I had all these plans of like, okay, I'm gonna train. Right. Nope. <laughs> I'm in worse shape than I was two years ago. I'm doing it with Monroe. Like th that was the closest I've worried to getting stuck on the way back down, my leg, my whole right like quad area cramped up right and i was worried that i was gonna have to get fucking life lighted <laughs> off the mountain. i'm like i can't walk Man. and i had to massage my leg so i could walk again and then i limped down the hill and then i had like a limp for like a week <laughs> it was hard to go up and down stairs i'm a little worried right it's, it, it, and I, i've committed I, did i miss this part it's this you're doing the same doing it again same hike. same hike again okay. i'm gonna right. bring more water I would but hope so. I fucked my knee up a few months ago. Mm -hmm. I, it hasn't even fully rehabbed yet, but I'm committed. I'm like, nope, I did this for Kyler. I don't want Monroe years from now to look back and say, well, you did that with Kyler, didn't do it with me. Yeah. She doesn't even want to go. <laughs> but I'm like, no, we're going. And can it? Here's what you should do. Say yeah. you're going to do it, go stay at that Best Western. <laughs> Just <laughs> that's down dead? There. Yeah. And like, oh, like maybe take some like candid photos like against the green screen of you guys hiking. Right. And then just send them back to the family and the whole time you guys are in the pool and watching uh. cable. Maybe that's what we should do. That's what I think. But I'm so do. I'm so stubborn, and I worry so much about the fairness that I I'm about. I've done something really dumb, is my confession, and I'm about to do something even dumber that I will not be talked out of. <laughs> so I may die on the mountain in a week and a half. My my uh, my wife Erin is the same way. Like with me, when even we're just going out on like little day hikes and stuff. Uh -huh. I just all I, in my brain, I'm just saying, I gotta get the fuck out of this house. Before I kill my family, because that, that's what my brain is saying. Sure. And it's like, I don't care what it is, and I mm -hmm. just pack them up, and I don't even know if we're going to go hiking. I don't know if we're going to the park. I don't know what we're doing. You burn some energy Just somewhere. go out and do something. Yeah. And sometimes we'll get lost on a, on a giant, like, three-hour hike, and I bring no water. Do the kids complain? Uh, yeah. They say they're thirsty. They nah, tell them to shut the fuck shut up. Shut up. Come on. Be tougher than that. <laughs> I was like, you wouldn't last in the real world. <laughs> uh, no, I just, I just forget. I don't know. Uh -huh. But they're still alive. But still she does alive. get very mad at me for my or like, did you bring snacks at least? I didn't. Uh -huh. I didn't bring any snacks. I, I think it, it it is maybe how we grew up in Idaho because it's like Lindsay, like the kids are so spoiled, <laughs> in in a good way, right? But like, <laughs> it's funny. I say spoiled. Uh, their needs are taken care of, <laughs> like the basic necessities. The basic necessity. They have food and water. At least <laughs> fucking kids. <laughs> fucking kids today with their food and water. <laughs> But it's like growing up, I didn't I didn't bring shit. Yeah. Like I just went out in the mountains and I, and I would be like thirsty. And I'm like, I guess I'm thirsty. I guess I'm going to I'm gonna drink some water when I get <laughs> guess back. I, I guess don't know. I'm going to have a headache for a while. I don't know. That's life. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have headaches because you don't drink enough water. Yeah. <laughs> just, just power through. That's pretty good. I wish you luck. Would you guys have a date set? I have a knee brace I'm bringing. Yeah, it's uh. Do you have a yeah. like a Do you have a life like it, a, a a toboggan sled that you, <laughs> so if when you I should get one. She can lower you down the mountain. We record these a little in a okay. So it's Friday. Yeah, it's the this okay. So this this coming Friday as, okay. as this episode gets released. Okay, it is uh, Saturday the seventeenth. We're heading down to Riggins on Friday. On the seventeenth <sighs> is the hike. I'm gonna go earlier this time, and I'm gonna hope for the best. But I'm I'm pretty nervous. My if, fear is that my knee gives out towards the top of the hill, and there's no trail, and there's no way to get down. I should I should bring a sled and just sled my way down the hill. <laughs> which I'd probably die then. Or get some rock skis and just oh, man, just something. go for it. Something. <laughs> it's going to be... If uh, the weather's bad, don't oh, go, man. please. For the love of God, don't go. If the weather's bad. If, if the weather is too bad, I won't go, but I'm probably going to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Like, so. Well, I can't I can't wait. The, the greedy part of me, the selfish part, cannot wait for that update. 
Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll see how bad this goes. I, I'm definitely going to be crippled level of sore. That's the best case. <laughs> I'll just I'll wheel you in here. Yep. And just yep. Like, tape a microphone to your face, and you can just lay back. <laughs> that was uh, a good time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for being vulnerable. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys keep sending in your, your personal dumb tales, because mm-hmm. those are fun to read, and we will have... More and more of the uh, Dumb Dumb Idiots listener editions down the road. So, again, that's dumb at isbedumb.com. And speaking of Dumb Dumb Idiots, yes. Zach, push the button. Dumb. Dumb, dumb. 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 Dumb, dumb. Idiot. We are starting off with a bang. Okay. Uh, this, <laughs> this is so bad that I almost didn't even bring it onto the show. Okay. Because it was that bad. Like, it made me so uncomfortable and mad that this even took place at all. Um, I don't know how you could be this stupid, this petty, completely unable to assess this situation correctly, but go ahead and bring it up on the screen here, Zach. So dad refused to break window to save toddler locked in hot car. What? Police say. Yeah, this is uh, this is bad. So as his one-year-old daughter was trapped in a hot car Monday afternoon, the 27-year-old man rebuffed oh. help from Metro police officers and his brothers to break the window because he couldn't afford damages to his new car. He said the air conditioner was on and the girl was okay. When uh, his partner was on the phone with an insurance oh company God. representative who um, who offered to send a tow truck, Sydney Deal told her to hang up because he didn't agree with the cost, according to the arrest report. So the, to- oh. the toddler, Seiya, was trapped in a high heat environment for about an hour and was dead when officers eventually smashed the window to pull her out, police said. Deal was subsequently booked into the Court County Detention Center on the count of child abuse and neglect causing substantial bodily harm, jail logs show. Deal did not attend a hearing earlier, uh, whatever, today when this article was released due to the uh, medical issue. Las Vegas Justice Court records show he is being held on a $20,000 bond, which I feel like that should be much higher. So here's how it all went down. So Deal flagged down the Metro officers patrolling near the 1700th block of 8th Street near Owens Avenue, west of Martin Luther King Boulevard. 3.33 3.33 p.m. and told them he accidentally locked his keys inside the running car and that his girl was inside. The officers offered to call a locksmith, a tow truck, or to break the window, which Deal declined. Instead, he borrowed the officer's phone to call his brother. Damn. So, yeah, it was uh, after several minutes they broke in, unconscious, dead on the scene, because he wouldn't break the fucking window. No part of me to save his cat. I know. And then, and then I don't understand the charge either of like uh, child endangerment that what results in bodily harm. Uh, bodily harm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's murder. I'm sorry, uh, bodily harm. Yeah, fucking murder. <laughs> this is this is murder. What of the a fuck? Child. What? That, that's How? just that's just somebody who is a terrible, terrible father. Like, right. How do you not have the parental instincts? I don't give a fuck. I would fucking. I don't even care if it's my kid. Right, exactly. I, was, I would run up and smash that fucking window out so fast, oh, so fast, yeah. so fast, and like like your own vehicle. Yeah, it's just your like a kid in your own vehicle. I would. I love my fucking truck. I would uh-huh. absolutely. If I had it, no insurance on it, I would take it pieces. Like it would be a pile of pieces. I'd stomp the windshield out. before. Right. Yeah, despite my fucking kid punching talk earlier. Right. In real life. Well, yeah, in real life, not the would you rather. Not no, not yeah. the would you rather would absolutely do whatever it took. To get the kid out of that vehicle. Right. I've had a lot of good friends That's punch windows selfish. out for dogs. Right. Oh, Get yeah, absolutely. a one-year-old kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, exactly. If, if the dogs, if uh, Penny and Ginger were locked in the truck or whatever, and, and, and we just couldn't open it, the battery died or something. Right. And they were endangered. Yep. Um, uh, where's the nearest rock? Yeah. Because I'm going to take that. I'm going to smash one of those fucking windows. A couple of my deal fr- with it later. A couple of my friends have done that. I've actually witnessed it in real life. Yeah. I saw. I, I think it was at the Lowe's actually here in Coeur d'Alene. Okay. I was sitting outside and it was a hot day and I saw people like gathered around a car and I was like, what? What's that? And then before I know it, the guy who just walked up, like they were there for probably five minutes, like talking. Yeah. And this other guy just walked up and like looked at him and then just smashed out the window with a rock. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. Because there was a kid in there. There was a, it was a dog. A dog in there. Yeah, yep. yeah. And the dog, you know, was I guess overheating. I didn't go up. I, I, I guess I wasn't just watching it all yeah, go down. Like, it's such a real I was just thing. Sitting there and trying to figure out why they were all around a car. I got pets and kids die all the time this way, which is also why you're always supposed to leave your window cracked at the very least in a situation like that. Like, yep. like if we have our dogs in the car and we go into a grocery store. No matter what time of year it is, yep. the windows are always cracked yep. to get to have that air circulation. So uh, something like that can't happen. Yeah, it's pretty people. I mean, yeah, so I, I, didn't, I didn't really know what to say about this. 
Yeah, I yeah. guess it just, but, it, but it's it, dumb. It's You're so right. dumb. It is beyond fucking dumb. Beyond dumb, and, and just selfish. Oh yeah, you know, just selfish because like this guy clearly knew. Every, people are telling him at the time. It's not like he can claim ignorance. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't know that could happen. No, people fucking told you you were on the phone with, and you chose not to listen to them. And I am a little confused on why. And I guess maybe it's because the owner was there yeah. that the cops weren't allowed to damage the property. But how come the cop couldn't just smash the window out? I mean, they waited a couple minutes, but when the cops got there, and he's like, no. Like, it's going to cost too much. Well... Could the cop just smash... Be like, okay, fuck you, and smash the window out? I don't know, actually, on that. Well, if if he's arguing, which clearly wasn't true, that the AC is on, the kid right. is okay... Yeah. I mean, I guess but they... even in Florida heat, I'm guessing with AC on, it probably still gets fucking hot. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've it been could. down there quite a bit. Right. If you have good AC, it's like, no, you'd be okay, actually. Okay. okay. But, like, so maybe the police could have believed that. I mean, you know... Uh, yeah, maybe they were could, lied because, to. Because, because yeah, th- th- it sounds like they were just lied to. Because if um if you if you just locked your car, windows up, kids inside, and you just started to walk away, and there's a cop there, and they're like, hey, you, you're not supposed to leave your kid like that, uh, and you were like, ah, I don't know, I'm just gonna be gone for a second. I don't think they could just immediately run over and be like, nope, too late, and just fucking smash your window. Right. Like, there'd have to be a little conference. So maybe that's what happened. I, I, it must be. Man. It must be. Okay, well, another, I mean, neither one of us has done something this stupid or even remotely <sighs> wow. terrible. And yeah. I'm fairly confident that none of our listeners have either. No. Uh, but in order to lighten things up a bit okay. and get away okay. from this awfulness, I thought we'd talk about just cheap steak or cheap, cheap skates in general. Mm-hmm. Just people basically physically unable to spend money or cover the cost oh of anything God. else. And I was wondering, uh, <laughs> what's your... I have a cheap skate. Like the most cheap skate thing you've ever witnessed or or done yourself? The one... Because this one went on for years. It's okay. A, it's a... Uh, and I didn't realize what a cheap skate he was until this final thing happened. <laughs> it, it, all, it all came together? It all came together. Okay. Uh, with one specific thing. Um, a, a buddy of mine in college... I'll leave his name out of it because he might, he might listen. <laughs> okay. But this buddy of mine, he was so cheap, and the rest of us the friends would talk about how like he'd come over to our rooms, and we're all poor, you know, college students. Right. He would come over, he would eat shit out of our fridge, he would never offer things, you know, he would never have things in his room when you went there. Um, you know, he if there was some kind of like pitching in situation, he always pitched in the least. <laughs> he always pitched out. Right, pitched <laughs> out or just, or just didn't pitch in. Right. You know, consistently. I'll, I'll get you later. Yeah, yeah. yep. Consistently for four years of college. Right. Cheapest thing I saw him do was one time we were leaving a Taco Bell and I uh, had just a tiny bit of a taco, double decker taco, whatever like that, in the wrapper, threw it in the garbage. Okay. He ran back to the garbage, uh, dug it out of the garbage, and then <laughs> ate my scraps of Taco Bell. Because he didn't want to pay for an extra thing, so but, so but but I was thinking uh, during all this time, okay, I guess he really is hurting for money. Yeah, he might just be uh, down on his luck for a long time. Down on his luck, but then immediately after graduation, he took all the money he saved for four years and went on a huge, like two month long fucking trip to Ireland, while the rest <laughs> of us had nothing. And just like barely, and I'm like, you motherfucker, you were saving money all four years Uh for this giant thing. You know, like we were, we were (laughs) spotting you on meals. You were coming to our rooms, eating all our stuff. (sighs) And it's just because, no, he just, he just got away with it. (laughs) Cheapskate. That's pretty smart to me. (laughs) (laughs) Easy. Uh, Yeah. The whole time you think back on it. Yep. And every time he's doing something like that in his mind, he's like already hiking a hill. In his, in right, his brain. Right. <laughs> he's visiting a castle. He's like, that castle's going to be sick. Checking out the Guinness he's, brewery. He's digging through the trash can. Yeah, oh, I just pictured his <laughs> savings account. While the rest of us are literally donating plasma to get beer money, he's like, I only got 3000 I bet I you only was got drinking. 4, would, he, would he walk around the party and drink half eaten? Oh, or, or, oh yes. Or drink half That uh, was a classic yeah. move he did. Oh my God, I can picture him doing that now. <laughs> yeah, it, it, he he would it. go, uh, especially at the end of the night, hey, all those Dixie cups. And like, who knows how, who was drinking those things? And he would just fucking little sip here, a little bit there, a little bit. Yeah, he he, all of those kinds of things, my, knew, miser things, he would do. I knew that would that would fit his description. Yep, for yep sure. nailed it, nailed it. Uh, the most <laughs> cheapskate thing uh, was also kind of a scam that me and my buddies found ourselves in. Yeah. Um, and this goes back to you know the the fun college days. Mm-hmm. But uh, we were partying and we were having a lot of fun. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, I was in a fraternity. So you saw a lot of people you didn't know. Okay. And you just kind of would become friends with them and like just kind of yeah. party. You know, it's just young party stuff. Sure. And there's this huge dude, giant, like 6'5", like 300 pounds, like could kick the shit out of you at any time. Like I'm pretty sure he got kicked off the football team. Oh, But okay. he was in our house, right? Okay. Him and some buddies who were also strong. Okay. So as we got to talking and then the idea of doing some blow came up. Okay. Right? okay. <laughs> and this guy goes, oh, he goes, I got some, I got some, no problem. And so we went up to this upper room to do some Coke. Uh-huh. And uh, it, it, there was no br- thing of like, this is like, we're not buying the Coke. 
He was our friend all night, and we were partying, and we just thought he had coke. <laughs> so we, he, he pours it all out, and we have a bunch of lines of blow. Okay. And then we do them. And then before we leave, he stands in front of the door and then says five bucks. It makes us all pay for the line that he just gave us <laughs> <laughs> without telling us anything. And he's so big. You have to like, okay. You're like, fuck, dude. Five, five bucks it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in college, five bucks is a foot long, man. Like that's right. Like, that's, <laughs> right. that's a whole meal. That's a meal. Yeah, Two meals and like, sometimes. And some, and some of them that uh, the people that were in the room, and there was a, like a hefty amount of us. Uh, they wouldn't have done it because we're all poor as fuck. Right. But he would not let us out. Some of us had to cover for somebody else. Like someone had to pay him twenty bucks. You're not to getting cover. out of that room alive. Exactly. Until you give him his five bucks. Yeah. And I was like, dude, like that's so. You got me. Kind of genius. <laughs> <You're really> genius. <laughs> uh, but someone like me, if I already tried to do that, he would have thrown me into the wall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got an ass kick for chicken people, but you, there's he nothing can you can do. Yeah, I never saw him again. Oh but that man, was, uh, what a what a good move. I feel like I feel like that that guy, if he's like big and like scary and strong, he mm-hmm. can just pull that off in a variety of situations. I'm sure he has. I'm sure he was just just go to somebody else's bar <laughs> and as customers leaving, five bucks. Five bucks. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? There's a it's cover to get five, out. There's a cover. <laughs> there's a cover to get out. I'm the bouncer for outside. It's an exit what? fee. <laughs> it need to make sense. Listen, I need to listen. Here's the deal: five bucks, or I punch your fucking face in. Well, I guess when you explain it to me that way, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, that, that's worth it. I just need some fresh air. Yeah, well, I got a, I got a fresh face to punch. <laughs> He's just blocking like random like bathrooms at places, <laughs> parking Are spots. Are you waiting for the bathroom? Five bucks. Um, what? Oh, it's five bucks. Five bucks to use the bathroom. <laughs> what? He's at every restaurant. He's like standing in front of the line. They're like, he's a five. What to use the menu? Five bucks. <laughs> I picture him outside a club and like there is a line of people waiting to get in like there's a legitimate cover charge uh-huh. and this guy's like five bucks and you're like oh yeah, yeah okay fine five yeah, bucks good. and then right after you pay him you go to another guy and he's like it's ten bucks and it's like wait what <laughs> yeah and, and then and then that guy explains that that other guy doesn't work for the club he's just too scared to ask him to leave yeah. so it's like you gotta pay him a cover then the real cover to get in <laughs> he just goes around walks down the line he goes no 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 like this is your cover and then just walks out <laughs> just walks right, out right. and then just goes down the street to the next bar oh, oh my god uh, now I'm picturing the best scenario where he, he there's a big line of people waiting outside of a club he walks from the back of the line to the front acts like he works at the club right. and, and then like hey man I can just take it now it's right, 10 bucks right. and, and he does it to every fucking person uh-huh. now just wait you have to still wait to get in <laughs> gives him a fake stamp gives him, every, <laughs> gives him a fake stamp then he goes pays his cover to the bouncer like walks to the cuts right. walks to the very front of the line I'm next right. goes on in and then just has a drink at the front and fucking stares at people coming in like I dare you to try and get your money back right. just fuck you fight me fight call me. the cops I'll kick the shit out it. of them <laughs> people are complaining they're like and the people working they're like no we hate it too right. we've, we've tried to get him to leave uh, I don't know the police are afraid of him we're afraid of him you come outside the library and like your bike's chained to a pole and he's standing by it and he won't let you get your bike back it's five bucks five bucks <laughs> God damn it. I love this guy just showing up in all these places in life. That'd be a nightmare. I would I would have PTSD ever. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you stand in front of your car. God damn it. <laughs> Five bucks. I go to take my fucking trash out and I walk to my own garbage can and I start to open it. And he slam he pops up and slams down the like, Five bucks. <laughs> God damn it! Jerry! Get out of here! God. Why? <laughs> That'd be a terrible life. You're always just a little nervous and you have a wad of $5 bills in your pocket at you've, all times. You've got $600 in $5 bills <laughs> in your pocket at all times, this I, motherfucker. I picture the most absurd things. I picture being, uh, now I just picture him being in the bathroom here <laughs> and I'm just uh, taking a dump and I go to use a toilet paper and he just fucking slaps <laughs> it out of my hands. Like he just pops out of the wall, five bucks. <laughs> How the fuck were you hiding in the wall? <laughs> you lift up the thing to grab some toilet paper and then he slides underneath the stall and he has the roll. <laughs> Just whoop, five, five bucks. Five bucks. <laughs> God All damn right. it. Fine. Okay. <laughs> you win. All right. Let's move on to the next story for the dumb, dumb idiots. And this one I know we, uh, we've talked about just around the office yeah. together, but we've never talked about it on the show. But it is amazing to see the lengths that people will go in order to get the perfect Instagram post. Okay. Or okay. Facebook post or whatever it may be. Uh, Zach, go ahead and bring it up. Woman falls on the highway oh. while recording on Snapchat. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like, <laughs> uh-huh. but it turns out this woman didn't sustain any injuries, oh. so that's good. But being on Snapchat in the car, falling out because of it, really? Oh, she fell out of a car? How did yeah. she not get injuries? I don't know. She just luckily didn't get smashed by a car. But uh, in Surrey, England, or yeah, Surrey, England on Saturday, police shared on Twitter that an unnamed person was hanging out the car whilst filming a Snapchat video. The car was driving down M25 south of London when the incident occurred. Police wrote that the passenger fell out of the car into a live lane. <laughs> it it only, must have been traffic or something. Maybe. Like. Uh, it is only by luck she wasn't seriously injured or killed, the Rhodes Policing Unit added. Huh. 
Uh, they also included a picture of the passenger window where the woman had fallen out with the hashtag no words. <laughs> Users asked police if the woman had been arrested and not, and the, uh, maybe surprised at the answer. According to the Surrey police, she was not necessarily, huh? or not necessarily, ne- no necess- necessity it was, it was not necessary to arrest her. There you go. I, I, I wanted to say that, <laughs> but they said it in a weird way. <laughs> so, yeah, it's dumb, but not illegal. Right, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, even without an arrest, police hope that others will learn from the incident, which I guess we can we can all hope uh, for that oh, amount of look information. Will you scroll up? Just last year, a 20... No, the other way... Oh. Just last year, a 23-year-old woman was a hit-and-run victim due to flying out of a car window after yelling, by Miami, yep. from the right passenger window. The woman <laughs> was struck by a Range Rover... Whose driver did not or did initially stop and pull over, but then left the scene completely. Oh, come on, people! Life, Life is greater than Snapchat. Greater than Snapchat. Oh my God! I uh, and I do. We we and again. I think I. I don't know why this keeps popping in my head, but we actually talked about on one of the beta episodes about a lady that fell in the fucking geyser. Yes, taking a selfie. Yellowstone. Yeah, in Yellowstone. Well, and, and, and just I, got torched up and had to drive herself to the hospital with yep, all, your skin yep. falling off her body. Just from taking a selfie and slipping into the geyser. And and those selfie Snapchat things, I mean, we talked about that, or I talked about that a long time ago in Time Time Suck about like right. the, uh, the, you know, over 10 people a year die. Yeah, I actually have a stat. You okay, want it? Okay, yeah. Okay. Between 2011 and 2017, mm-hmm. 259 people died Jesus. taking selfies worldwide. Um, and I, I do have a story about the most ridiculous like Instagram, Facebook post that I've seen recently. Okay. It wasn't somebody falling out of a car, yeah. but it was actually when we were... Uh, I was on my trip to to Banks Lake in Washington, okay. uh, so a handful of weeks ago, and there was this mom and her friends, and they were the attractive women, okay. but what they were wearing were basically thongs as bathing suits, kind yeah. of a new trend. I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm fine with it. Oh, like thong panties? Yeah. Okay. Like, have you seen the bathing suits are just getting smaller sweet. and smaller again? Yeah, it is sweet. Okay. But then... They had uh, her eight-year-old son Mm -hmm. taking a photo of their asses as they looked out at the water. And I was just like, what? What the fuck? Yeah, just, you know, no, no, one more. And then he would stand there and he would take the picture and then they'd come over and look at it and be like, oh, nope, nope. Nope. And then run back out and then make the little kid take a picture of their thong asses on the (laughs) lake. Listen, listen, Billy. Uh, you, you really gotta try and get a better angle of mom. Mom's, you know. Uh, does my butt look good to you here, Billy? Does my back pussy look good, Billy? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Looks that, great, that, mom. That is just so ridiculous. That that kind of stuff is just so annoying. Where it's like, I'm no sexual prude, but it's right. like, don't sexualize a kid like that with your. Fr- what are you fucking doing at that age? I don't know. I mean that's that's gonna that's gonna fuck a kid's head up. Yeah, you know? when you, totally. Th- th- like later when you're seeing pictures of girls, you know, like your age when you're a young adult, and then you're just having flashbacks of your mom's pussy fucking <laughs> hanging off the boat. It's just it's it blew my mind. That's looking unreal. at that real. And I know that there are uh, other examples of that type of thing of people just they they have nothing to hold their phone, but they need to get the perfect picture, so they have a uh, have a little tiny kid do it. <laughs> Uh, uh, and yeah, we did cover like at the Grand Canyon too. Yeah. A lot of people, people take fall. selfies and, and slip off the, the side of the cliff. Yeah, and I think I don't know if we've talked about that on this show or elsewhere, but yeah, I'm just amazed some place like touristy places, like right. like a Yellowstone, you know, like a Grand Canyon, where there'll be these cliffs, like or like or like a very dangerous like a canyon situation, like a trail on a where there's a, like a geyser next to you or just like right. a steep drop off and people just casually walking on the very edge people not moving much for other people coming up the trail like like they get this like false sense of security where it's like oh this is a park right it's like no it's yes but also you're on a trail by a fucking cliff and it's just dirt yeah. and it's like how do you not understand basic you know basic things of like no you don't put all your pressure on the edge because if that crumbles you're not going to have a stern conversation with the manager later. Yeah. You'll just be dead. That'll, that'll be the end of it. Right. And then you get to post nothing. Ah. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes when people do th- those uh, really ridiculous like Darwin Award type things, uh-huh. like like those selfies, I think we talked about the Darwin Award episode too in time. It's like, uh, it doesn't bother me when they die. Sure. Because I'm like, hey, you probably shouldn't be in the gene pool. <laughs> probably like, if you're that stupid. Like, we'll replace you. We'll replace you. Well, there's got to be someone a little bit better for our, yeah. the, the, the humanity's evolution. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You weren't, you weren't that important to the human race. <laughs> uh, but not the dumbest thing I found this week. Oh, what's the dumbest thing you found? Well, we saved that for Apocalypse Pending. It's the apocalypse. <laughs> this story. This story is uh, it's, it's a real good one. Okay. I like uh, good ones. And this was actually sent our way by dummy Camilla. Um... Zach, you can go ahead and bring it up on the screen. 
Woman who sawed off own hand found guilty of fraud. Uh, what? <laughs> Interesting headline, to say the least. Uh, yeah. So the court, or a court in the capital of Ljubljana, found that Julia, Slovenia. Uh, yeah. Uh, Julia Adzilic, 22, had taken out five insurance policies in a year before her injury. She had claimed it happened as she cut branches. So, <laughs> Adlizic stood to gain more than it looks 1.16 million in payouts. She now faces two years in prison, while her boyfriend was given a three-year sentence. So he must have been the mastermind of it. He must have talked her into cutting her hand off with yeah, insurance money. Exactly. Adlizic uh, uh, and a number of relatives were arrested in 2019 after she arrived in the hospital with her hand <laughs> cut off above the wrist. And a number of relatives, they were all in it? Trying to, yeah, they somehow... Uh, poor in on her, it, excuse me? Yeah, uh, poor her got talked into cutting her fucking hand off. What did they draw straws for who was going to lose their hand for this fraud? <laughs> Probably. A court found that she and her boyfriend had intentionally left the severed hand behind rather than bringing it with them to ensure the disability was permanent. However, authorities recovered it in time and sewed it back <laughs> on. <laughs> Prosecutors said the woman's boyfriend had also made internet searches about art- artificial hands in the days beforehand. That's funny, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Prosecutors said that was proof uh, that the injury was intentional. Uh, Adlizic's boyfriend father was also given one year suspended Damn. sentence. So it's like a whole... The whole family was in on this right, fraud. Right. Uh, and yeah, they, she she's denied cutting her hand off. And I love those suspicious because they, um, they left the hand... <laughs> Because that is ridiculous. If you have a whole group of people show up at the hospital, uh-huh. and you know, like her hand's been cut off, and, and, and the doctor's like, oh, okay, oh, wh- wh- where's the separate hand? Uh, did, did you grab it? <laughs> oh, shit. I was, oh, supposed, I was supposed to grab it? I, you were on hand duty. We, oh, you left it on the counter? <laughs> like, like, there's no way that you would forget to bring the fucking hand to the hospital. Just imagine showing up. If, I mean, uh, if it, it was like a skill God. saw. Let's say it was like a nice skill saw. That had to hurt so uh, bad. How perfect the cut would be. Mm-hmm. It'd just be like this, like a, a prop. Ugh! It'd be like putting on a mannequin hand. Like oh. it'd be that perfect of a cut. I just can't believe that. How? Man, she must have bled so much. Mm-hmm. That is insane. That's uh, insane. It did say they would and receive they, more than half a million uh, euros in a lump sum uh, if it did get, if it did get, you know, if it, they did get away if with if it. If they got away with it with right. the insurance stuff. Right. But your hand, oh my God. <laughs> I would, no, I would, I would rather be, Nope. Uh, there's no way I would take like a fraud thing like that to get like uh, money lose, to not lose my hand. Okay. So, is there any amount <sighs> of money that you would chop off a hand? A hand? A hand? Nope. Nope. Because then, what are you going to do with? Like, you just want your hand more than I want you my want hand. Five I want million. My hand. I'll I'll rob I'll rob and stay uh, before I chop my hand off. Okay. If, it, if it comes to that. Pinky. Mm. Would you lose a pinky for a million? Not a million. Okay. An uh, ear. What oh, would you an lose? Ear. <laughs> uh. I would a toe, uh, pinky toe. Yeah, cut off a pinky a toe. toe. Okay, no one can see that. If I'm if I'm real, okay, if I'm real hard up for money, I would. Uh, I get rid of my right ball. I don't care about it. <laughs> You're not a big fan. Nah, it's like fucked up, it's sore. <laughs> it's useless. It's useless. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like uh, yeah. I, I would get rid of one of my balls for free. Not for free. Oh, but for mm, million. Just donate it to like Goodwill. Just throw it in the trash. Who gets the weirdest donation they'd ever get was one right ball. <laughs> Just throw it on the counter. <laughs> Fucking, if you can get some money out of it, fine. I think it's garbage. Yeah, I don't care. I've always, I, I've always hated that ball. I need to fill out one of those tax deduction forms. You got one? <laughs> uh, sir, that's a ball. That's a ball in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want to pay for it either. Five bucks. Give me the fucking slip, lady. Five bucks. Five bucks. I just bring them. I just bring that ball to different places. Five bucks. Five bucks. Is that that's cool? Yeah. And then they give me the five bucks, and I just take my ball. My fucking my, my ball scam. Uh, <laughs> just the blatant ball scam. That'd be a fun way to get arrested. <laughs> That'd be a good article. Dan arrested ripping off dozens of businesses by yanking his own balls back. Uh, I get rid of a pinky for five million dollars. Okay. What about you? Yeah. Pinky. I cut your pinky off and give you five million. <laughs> My. What, what? What? Is there an amount of money that you would accept to lose a hand? I don't think so. I just, I value, I just value my life more than money. Right. In a lot of ways. And okay. I, I mean, not that like, if you lose a hand, you're yeah. fucking useless. You're right. But I have both of them right now and I enjoy having both you my like, hands. You like your hands. I do like my hands. I okay. feel like to, to touch things and, and build, I build a <laughs> lot of stuff and it'd just be, it would be a change that I wouldn't want and I don't care how much money. Okay. Yeah. All right. So fuck well, there, that. We, okay. We, there we, we settled it. We, we settled, settled it. it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at the the internet. Let's uh, let's mock some people who. Uh, oh, I got a good one today. Are very petty. Kind mm-hmm. of the theme of of today in a way. Mm-hmm. All right. One star heroes. I get no respect in real life. Always am upset. So I let them know I hate them on the internet. Yeah. 
Now we're now I'm flipping this one around actually today. Okay. Just, just for a little variety. All right. I actually agree with the one star people, all of them in this situation. And, and okay. Because I, I, I did some digging, a narrative emerged. Okay. And a apparently a psychopath. It owns the local pizza factory place here in Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> right. A person who seems determined to destroy their own business at any cost. Oh man, and I have I have beautiful childhood ties to the the pizza factory. Not here in Coeur d'Alene, but right. where I grew up, they had one, and that was birthday spot. Right. That right. Was, they had video games. They had Mortal Kombat. They had that yeah. cool tiny little car yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. They had like Tekken, yep. Street Fighter. I mean, they had it. I haven't been to this pizza factory. This is over on Appleway, uh, the one yeah here in yep, town. Yep. And I've been by it numerous times. Lindsay and I were just talking about like, oh, we should just bring the kids for a goof around night here. Right. And now I really want to go. Okay. To hope that the owner manager is there and we, after all these we reviews. Should, we'll go. We'll go together and try and catch them. We should try and experience this. Okay. Because yeah, they have the video game room and and it's like uh, yeah, this place is like three out of five stars. This pizza factory. Um, okay. And 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 I and I would kind of expect that. Like it's a, it's a place to meet these kind of places. Are, you're, yeah, you're not going to get a high quality pizza in all likelihood. Yeah, you're going to get an okay pizza. You're going to have some fountain drinks. They're going to have a shitty salad bar, and you're going to play some video games. I almost died at the pizza factory. Now that I remember it, you're poison food poisoning. No, I the, the cheese slipped off the thing, uh-huh. and I swallowed a whole chunk of cheese. You choked on it. I was choking on it. My stepdad was whacking my oh, back, wow. and I couldn't breathe. Drama at the pizza this, factory. This is one of my favorite stories to tell because okay. I thought I was going to die, uh-huh. and I <clears throat> finally got all the cheese out. I think and my I'm... mom goes, "Stop making a scene." That's right. You told me that, and I was like, "What? <laughs> Stop making a scene!" Stop making a scene, and I was yeah. like, <laughs> "And my stepdad's like, what? Like, are you kidding? Are you gonna die here? Is, are you willing to go that far to embarrass me? You know how embarrassed I would be I'd if probably, you choked on the pizza I just paid for? I, it's vivid, like nine or ten years old. Like, am I? This is it? I didn't pay for you to choke on that pizza. I paid for you to eat it and not embarrass me. Right? If you're gonna die, you die quietly, where you do not bring me shame. It's such a parent thing, too. I'm sure I've done that to my kids. Like something terrible has happened. Right? Like she really, really. Hurt her knee or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. smashing like, it. Stop like, crying. Just, 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 just not here. Right. We're, we're trying to enjoy our evening. <laughs> Stop breaking your own ankles. Right. Right. Not my problem. Yep. I, oh, I know I've done right. some of those things okay. too. So, okay. So, back okay. on track. So, here, let's go to these one stars. Now, look, I'm, it's going to build. Okay. Okay. So, first one you see, Kim S. One star salad bar was dirty and empty. I believe it. Okay. <laughs> Had to ask the staff to refresh it. There was plenty of workers to have it taken care of without us having to ask. Owner, here's where it starts. Okay, owner, owner, rude and unfriendly to customers. You'd be like, okay, well, maybe, okay. maybe, maybe not. Kim, I don't know you. Maybe he was having, maybe uh, the owner was having a bad day. Maybe he's having a bad day. This right. is uh, just summer of 2016. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go a little earlier in 2016. This is March. As a few other reviews have stated, the customer service of the management is horrible. All right. Two. The pizza was good. The young guy working the counter was polite. However, the mid 40s male manager was rude and unprofessional. <laughs> There are better places in the CDA Post Falls area that actually want your business, have great customer service. Okay. Uh, all right. So you're like, oh, a little, oh, that's funny. Two people complain about this guy. Yep, two. Referencing more. So you look a little for 2017. March, you know, it's time has moved on. Yeah. In the past, we love going, this is uh, Kev Shas D. All right. In the past, we love going to Pizza Factory in CDA because they have the salad bar for us, games for the kids, and good pizza. Yeah. They're expensive, but we knew that going in. Today, our experience was horrible. The woman who took our took our order was wonderful but the man who was always there when we go treated us like we were unwanted annoyances and uh. then complained that one of the this from the arcade so one of the things something yeah. from the arcade room was left on the floor while our kids were still playing we were not in his home my husband and I were there to enjoy dinner as a family yeah. and to connect with each other while the kids played games but having him come out multiple times complain sigh and throw his hands in the air was so annoying <laughs> We spent $65 to hear lectures while we were eating, and he didn't give us a chance to clean up since our kids were literally still playing. <laughs> I would not recommend this restaurant. The manager owner is cold and rude. Oh, man. So you're like, okay. Okay, a fine. Pat- a pattern's emerging. Yeah. And then the next one, Sean C. Now we're in 2018. Okay. August. Okay. Took a party of 14. These are all one stars. All right. Took a party of 14 into Pizza Factory for a multifamily meal. We paid a good amount of money for this meal. Instead of the nice plastic cups for the $1.95 per drink, the older man, owner or man. <laughs> He's back. He's back. Owner or manager <laughs> with beard mentioned on other posts <laughs> told the cashier to give our party paper cups because our party was so big. That made us feel like second class customers. A party of 12 a party of twelve came after us. All of them had the nice plastic cups. <laughs> Not sure how that happened. Then we tried to get a small amount of ranch dressing as a condiment for the pizza from the salad bar. Same guy said we had to pay 50 cents. I was shocked. Pizza was not that good. Service from the regular staff was great. 
The guy, if he is the owner, is obviously unhappy in his work and needs to find something else to do. His customer service was deplorable. And he goes on to talk about taking his business elsewhere. This guy, apparently, really good at hiring people. (laughs) Right. Right. Because everyone loves who he's hiring. He's just a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. I keep on picturing that it's Jerry, too. Like, from our other guy. (laughs) Five five bucks. He just comes out, just pushes the kitchen door open and goes out there and (laughs) slaps their nice... (laughs) <laughs> Slaps their plastic cups off right, the thing. Five right. bucks. Five bucks. Five bucks. But for what? For, for what? better cups. <laughs> better cups. You heard me. <laughs> you heard me. Okay. Now it escalates. All right. So now we're at Harley C. 2015. So we're going further back. <laughs> He's been a dick for He's a long time. He's been a dick time. for years. All right. Stuck around after spending well over 300 bucks on a party until about 830. We were being cleaned around and glared at. <laughs> I don't know the name of the early to mid 40s manager. <laughs> 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 but on the way out... <laughs> One of my friends politely said, thank you very much. And his reaction was an exaggerated eye roll and to not reply at all. Under my breath to my friend, I said, what the fuck was that all about? The manager said, what was that? Do you have something to say? I chose not to reply, just shook my head as I was almost to the door. The manager then proceeded to follow my group outside (laughs) and attempt to question me further. I had no interest other than to tell him that I was unsure why he was trying to conjure up an argument for something that I was going to completely overlook. (laughs) <laughs> and just says he won't be returning. Right? <laughs> so now this guy's following people outside of the parking lot. Trying to kick the shit out of right. him. Right. It gets worse. I picture him like, <laughs> like spinning a pizza dough. He comes outside. What the fuck you say? <laughs> fuck you say? <laughs> you like doing kicks. <laughs> <laughs> Still uh, keep. We toss them. They're awesome because I know that's their slogan. <laughs> He's throwing it up super high and then punches them <laughs> and catches it again. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a psycho. Oh. All right, this, this, and this, the last one to save the best for last is my favorite. <laughs> Julie R, 2016. If I could give this place zero stars, I would. My, my friend and I stopped by Saturday evening at 7.30 for a small pizza and salad bar. The place was empty and filthy. Nice. I asked if they were closed, and the owner manager said, I wish we were. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we were. <laughs> oh, it gets way better. <laughs> I asked my friend if she wanted to go somewhere else. We decided to stay anyway, which didn't last long. Uh, I received a plate for the salad bar, went to get my salad, and there was nothing there. And the very <laughs> they, they cleared the salad bar. Very nice girl behind the counter was cleaning up. I advised her I'd order the salad bar. She reluctantly started bringing the items back. I ended up with a plate of lettuce and a few baby carrots after five minutes because he didn't have anything stocked. The manager owner passed by our table, still were the only ones there, asked if there was a problem. I expressed my concern. <laughs> Overpaying five bucks for lettuce and carrots. He came back two minutes later and slammed four dollars and fifty cents on our table and walked off. <laughs> then the owner manager was cleaning off tables with a floor broom and broke a table, which made him angry. He began to try to repair the table right next to us as we were sitting there. We were uncomfortable and asked one of the nice young girls behind the counter if she would please box our pizza to go when it's ready. Oh man. She did and as we went to leave. My friend who has worked in customer <laughs> service her whole career, more than 30 years, confronted the owner manager Ooh. and told him he had made our visit extremely uncomfortable. He harshly made excuses for the salad bar, told us they had been very busy earlier, hence the mess not being prepared for us. Two of us. <laughs> I told him that our families have been coming there for years for birthdays and after soccer dinners, and this is the worst customer service that we've ever had. Oh, man. He became very angry <laughs> and told us that we were shitty customers <laughs> and proceeded to follow us out the door yelling and screaming. I felt he was going to get aggressive, had my hand on my pepper spray. <laughs> it's too bad he's such a poor representative of the restaurant. Hopefully the franchise owner will take action. Action will never go back. This guy's a fucking psychopath. He's a lunatic. I love that he is every one star. I'm pretty sure every one star review uh-huh. is references him. It's he, him. He has single handedly <laughs> taken them from a four and a half to five star review down to three. One dude <laughs> over a period of four years. I want and then equal parts want to meet this crazy manager. Right. Who's the nice lady behind the desk? Right. Because she's nice to everybody. She, she just, she's a oh, that's, angel. That's just Hank. She's an angel. That's Hank. Right. He's, listen, ever he's, since he got back out of prison, he's been very angry. Just, come here. Come like, here. Lean, lean in. Like, he's going to yell at you. He's gonna, he, he's gonna, he might hit you. Try to be nice. Right. Russell hit me. Like, just <laughs> right, like right. this weird, what? What? Enjoy your pizza. Enjoy your- <laughs> Yeah, enjoy your pizza. <laughs> Yay, thank you for the tip. <laughs> just get like, right, right. Come, sit down, please, God. Please, God, sit down. It's a sausage pizza situation. Uh, what a crazy psycho. I, I, I picture the cashier getting the uh, the under the lip tattoo <laughs> that just says, get out. So she can hide it. Run while you can. R- right. Every customer that comes in, get out. 
What? Why are you doing that? Just, ha, ha, hey, what, do you, what can I do for you? Wow. Run while you still can. Save yourself. <laughs> she has different tattoos and weird spots. Like <laughs> the inside of her lip is get out. Like, what was that? She lifts up her armpit. It's like, it's like run while you can. They're like, what she, the fuck is happening? She has a chest plate tattoo. <laughs> then when she squeezes her boobs together, it just says, run run before he kills you. Right. It, like, it looks like, it's like some he's, cool quote. He's going to kill you. It's he, like one of those old sweatshirts that you fold in half, but you put your boobs together. <laughs> And it's just like spelling. He's gonna kill you. <laughs> You'll die here. You'll die here. Uh, so I just thought that I thought that was a, a, a fun twist on the one stars. I thought that was amazing. So he's the one star. He, uh, he's gonna uh, kill somebody. I have tears in my eyes. I, I just I just want to like uh, check back in in like a month. Okay. And there's, and there's another one star. Uh, <laughs> we went there for a nice dinner, but then the owner manager killed my family. <laughs> What kind of restaurant kills your family? I had my dog tied up outside. <laughs> Owner in the mid forties <laughs> came outside, strangled my dog to death, <laughs> <laughs> then charged me fifty cents for the cleanup. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then threw my dead dog on the salad bar. Right. <laughs> and said, "Is I that know, what you want?" When wanted? I go to a restaurant on a Friday night, I don't appreciate people eating my dog that the owner has just murdered. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I want a nice slice of Canadian bacon pizza, what I don't want is someone choking my fucking dog out. <laughs> uh, what kind of pizza would you write, uh, would you like? Remember, there's right and wrong answers. <laughs> right. Like what? What? Yeah, uh, sausage. He knocks your fucking plate off. Oh Next. My and then, it's some just insane movie where like I don't know a, a meat lovers and he just takes out a fucking gun and just shoots whoever's standing next to you in the head again okay, what, what kind of pizza, pizza do you want <laughs> whatever is uh, your just favorite. cheese cheese the right spec- answer <laughs> right he answer. makes you <laughs> he's super friendly yeah yeah cheese that's I what you have to say you got it and you're then, gonna love this cheese and what do you want he talks to the dead body he's like ah, just kidding just you're kidding. dead and what get him the like? fuck out of here <laughs> I don't like dead people that I just killed my restaurant but also I'm charging 50 cents for body removal <laughs> <laughs> alright let's take a look at some good stuff now okay I'm really excited for this week's Sliver of Hope Sliver of Hope Now, this is a popular TikTok video. Uh, okay. But it is also popping up on Facebook and Instagram. It's, it's made its way to everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. Th- I think the article that we're going to read actually has these the numbers wrong Okay. on this man. Because I believe it is like well past 24 million. But I was reading a couple okay. different articles on this guy. Uh, but he is from Idaho. He's down in Idaho Falls. Uh, we've actually even talked about it before I even knew that any of this had happened. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we put that song on and we've... We've been yeah, dancing to it, but and I haven't, about I haven't it seen the video. Okay, right. right. Uh, okay, go ahead, and Zach. We can bring it up on the screen here. So, a man who went viral for skateboarding while drinking cranberry juice <laughs> has a new set of wheels. So, Nathan Apodaca of Idaho Falls went viral with a TikTok video he filmed last month. His vehicle had broken down, and he used this unconventional form of transportation to get to work. He says, "My car just shuts off sometimes. The battery, I don't know what it is, just shuts off." I always have my longboard in there just in case I run out of gas or something. So uh, he had planned to deal with the broken down car after work. As he rode down the street drinking his juice, he lip synced to Fleetwood Mac's Dreams. So I'm going to go ahead and play this for you right now. Yeah, and that's what we've talked about for years right. with that song. You love that song. Yeah, we, whenever it comes on, just, uh, just yes, you'll hear whatever it is and you'll look over and whatever you're doing, you got to stop and dance in your chair. <laughs> and so I'm so pumped that it, that it took off and turned into this. So here he is, just jamming. Like that is just... Uh, you know, as the guy who shared this one, Drew Frog, he said, I don't use this verbiage often, but this is a whole vibe. Simple oh, as that. Oh, that's a great vibe. So it went off. It took off. Yeah. Um, uh, Fleetwood Mac actually uh, ended up recreating the story or oh, recreating the video. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, and we can watch that one here. We can watch oh, the whole thing. Oh, that's so cool. Right. So members of the band. and right. uh, uh, Mick e- Fleetwood. Right. And so even <laughs> even uh, even Ocean Spray themselves like started the challenge in a way they replicated it okay, right okay okay so as the as the story continues the video caught attention of Ocean Spray brand new juice he was drinking the company surprised Apocada or Apocada I'm trying to get his yeah, probably, uh, yeah, Apocada Apocada yeah. with a new truck filled with oh. bottles of juice and we can watch the video here we're gonna skip it for, yeah uh, but you can and again we'll post this whole page up so you can go go check it out but they they filled up the bed of the truck. With nothing but the cranberry oh, juice, and, and, and then gave him, gave a, new, him a new gave truck. him a new truck. That's beautiful. And he's got, gone on to uh, post other videos. He's uh, posted a video where he's in a tutu dancing with his daughter, and that one's got like a million views. And he's always saying thank you. Yeah, and he's raising a bunch of money, selling a bunch of shirts. Yeah, I saw this yeah. morning. Uh, I didn't know we were going to do this, but I just saw right. my news feed because uh, I never watched the video, and I just heard like the Fleetwood Mac guy, whatever. And right. I saw something where he um, 
yeah, just in the last few days, he started selling tons. Well, and, and for again, for people listening to this, uh, we recorded this to, uh, almost a week before it came out. Right. So who knows how many he'll sell by the time this episode comes out. Uh-huh. But as of the week before this came out, he, he was selling, I don't know, thirty forty thousand dollars $40,000 worth of shirts already. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. It's amazing. In the video they showed- uh, Just for sharing a good vibe. Right. In the, for the, in the video that they show where he was presented with the truck, like he's coming out of a trailer, like, you know, yeah. uh, off, there's room to, to go up. And yeah. I hope that th- this is a, is a great starting point. I love it. Yeah, just a just a super chill guy who's just uh, you know uh, you know caught the eye and, and look what it turned into. <sighs> so, I mean, almost everybody has seen that video how ref- now. How refreshing! What a, what a nice palate cleanser right. for 2020. Exactly. And people are no? doing like ones dressed like all dang Jason mask. Mm, uh, <laughs> funny, funny. <laughs> and there's one of those guys wearing a pumpkin head. And then like <laughs> when it comes to the drinking the juice party, just pours the entire thing like in his uh, over the top of fun, the helmet. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Uh, so people good. are having a blast with it. Um, let's go take a look at some weird stuff I found. Okay, I like weird stuff. <laughs> to you from Internet. The Internet has all sorts of neat things. Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek, together, as a couple. To you, from Internet. This is a fun one. It's okay. very it's very simple. Okay. But this is one of the scariest things that you can be for Halloween this year. Uh, it's on sale now. Zach, let's take a peek here. It's a... A, a Karen Halloween mask. Oh my God, <laughs> that's a great mask, <laughs> isn't it? The Karen Halloween mask. Just you can see that voice going. Oh. Let me talk to your I manager. Am, I will not be treated like this. <laughs> Excuse I, me. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? <laughs> I've pay, I've been waiting here for five minutes. Like I, that mask is saying that. I am that. calling my lawyer the second <laughs> I leave here. Get your hands off of me. It's complete with the uh, you know with a crazy disgusting mouth, some angry eyeballs, and of oh course that God. legendary Karen haircut. <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> uh, so we'll post the link up in the uh, you know in the episode description. But let's take a peek at, at one more item here. Okay. And this one is back to back to Etsy because mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that I I love I love. I just where ordered we can find something off Etsy. Of Etsy the other day. What is it? I I ordered. Uh, speaking of fire things from before, <laughs> I, the, the the all the plastic. Uh, you know, like gas containers, they sell okay. at all the uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, everywhere. Right. Uh, true, true value, whatever. Like they have these stupid fucking right. safety yeah. designs this that make them so hard to use that I get gas all over my hands every fucking like it's a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, it's a it's a combination lock right. type situation. So, yeah. So to get the gas container I wanted, I had to order an old metal <laughs> two gallon gas container, like a like a like an antique uh-huh. that I won't be using as an antique. I'm yeah. just going to use it for my fucking gas container so I can pour it how I want. <laughs> So it's, it's coming to my house it's right now. It's coming right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So this is a mystery box from a taxidermist. <laughs> so for oh my God. about 40 bucks. That's you, hilarious. You send this guy and he sends you <laughs> a random <laughs> mystery box taxidermy item. Uh, this one this one I was just laughing at for people listening. It's is like a, a dead mouse. It's like a dead mouse with googly eyes uh, put on top of a stapler. <laughs> so like a little mouse stapler. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, here's a crucified lizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one is just, I think, a, a bird with like multiple bunch heads. Of all, eyes. I think it's just a bunch of bird, it's a bunch heads. Of bird heads. Yeah, bunch just of bird all, heads. All put together. Uh, there's a tiny little oh, heart. What? There's uh, more mice. I with, love this. I know. Isn't it crazy? Butterfly necklace. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> uh, which is like a, a troll that he's made out of uh, a dead mouse parts. Yeah, dead mice and a gigantic like rat head hair. But I oh, want to see what else this guy so did. Great. And he does actually. His shop is called the World Around R ah, or U U E W E, E-W-E. Yeah. Um, and he does uh, it's have you the world around you you okay yeah. there we go sorry I'm dumb uh, and then we he has he does this one random item which is only two dollars and sixty nine cents okay and he he doesn't tell you what it is obviously um, you might uh-huh. like it you might not he doesn't promise anything he just sends you a random ass item from his collection so funny and it's so cheap <laughs> yeah. just less than three bucks exactly so there you go. <laughs> That was fantastic. Yeah, I, I I hope this guy does great. Me too. That's a fun business. I know. What Mi- a- mystery taxidermy box. <laughs> that is and mystery a- boxes are actually a thing, right? There's uh, ones absolutely. that are crazy expensive too. Yeah. I, I mean, I w- I don't feel like I'm exaggerating, but maybe million dollar, but they are like thousand, five thousand, yeah. ten thousand dollar mystery right? where they they promise that what is in the box is value is valued right. at that. You, you just don't, don't know. know what it's going to be. Funny, isn't that? I mean, we should yeah. play that game. We, we, we sold mystery boxes money. at uh, <laughs> at some of the when we, used, when we used to do live time sites, We did a mystery box, and it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Let's do more. Let's do more. Let's get. We got. We got to find. Maybe we'll order one of these dead taxidermy. Maybe get boxes. diamond. Maybe get poop. <laughs> you don't know. Maybe get a, a poop with emoji eyes on it. 
Maybe get a, you know, a little note from that guy we were talking about asking for five bucks. <laughs> That'd be a nightmare. I'm going to worry about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Go to print something. He just slaps Maybe. your hand down. He tried to grab your spreadsheet. Maybe get a coupon for a pizza factory. Oh, man. I am pumped about that. Use it your own risk. <laughs> Use it your own peril. <laughs> well, we've got a brand new officially titled segment that we kicked off last week, which is dedicated to all the lovely dummies out there that are emailing into the show. And we call this Junk Mail. <laughs> It's junk mail. That is fun. That is a fun one. If you haven't seen that, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can uh, take a peek at the new <laughs> intro with the happiest and cutest little envelope yeah. you ever could see. So let's get a couple updates here from fellow dummies. This one coming in on the heels of our running from the cops talk a couple episodes back. Okay. This comes from dummy Sam. He writes, this week's ep- episode when you guys were talking about running from the cops at a house party... Uh, reminded me of a similar thing that happened to me in high school. My buddy and I went to a house party. It was a house we'd never been to before. We were standing by the door in the kitchen and someone yells cops. That's pretty much how a lot of those things go. (laughs) The last thing I saw as I took off to hide was my buddy in a dead sprint out the back door, bailing over the back deck railing and disappearing into the darkness. After everything was said and done, I went back looking for my buddy. That's when I discovered that the house we were at was built on a mountainside. And the background was at least, or the backyard was at least 15 feet below the deck and was basically wilderness. Oh my God. There was a thick, sticky brush everywhere. I start calling for my friend. I hear him call back from the brush. And as I look towards the sound of his voice, I start noticing full cans of beer and partially, partial boxes of beer scattered all around. So apparently, when my friend bailed over the railing, he free fell into the bushes, broke his ankle. Then to make matter worse, everyone started pitching their beer into the woods behind the house so the police couldn't find it. So my buddy just laid there with a broken ankle after fleeing, falling in the dark, and then was immediately pelted by all the beer in the house. <laughs> anyway, that's my story. Love the podcast. I drive from Coeur d'Alene to Mullen every day oh, for work cool. and listen to this podcast. gets me uh, in a good mood to go to work. So Sam W. So stay safe in those mines. <laughs> Sam yeah. W. If you're going out to Mullen. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next junk mail item. Uh, b- before we get into this one, I have a quick question for you, Dan. Yeah. Have you ever hurt yourself trying to look at your own butthole? I have not. Oh, well, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't either. Uh, but dummy Joe has. Okay. <laughs> for a little background story. I'm an Italian from New York City. My family is like your typical Italian old school family. So when I was about seven or eight, I was curious what my asshole looked like when I farted. That's what, yeah, that's what it is. I get it. Mm -hmm. So I did the only thing I could think of to solve this mystery. I climbed on top of the sink in the bathroom, looked between my legs like Ace Ventura talking out his ass, and let one rip. (laughs) I laughed so hard, (laughs) somehow I slipped and fell off the sink and chipped my tooth. (laughs) Now I have another problem. What the fuck am I going to tell my mom? If I tell her what I did, she's going to beat my ass. Uh, so after a minute of thinking, I, uh, I decided to go with this. Uh, I took a shower and went to tell my mother what happened. I said I was uh, you know, taking my sock off, and I bent uh-huh. over and hit my tooth on the sink uh-huh. and chipped it. Uh, she was upset, but I didn't get my ass beat, so <laughs> success. A few days later, she took me to get my tooth fixed. Problem solved, right? Fast forward about 20 years. Typical Sunday dinner. You know, about 15 family oh, members. You know, aunts, uncles, grandma, grandpa, everyone. I noticed my nephew had a chipped tooth, <laughs> same one as me. So I said, you want to hear a no funny story? No way. <laughs> I started telling him about my escapade. Turns out my whole family was listening. But once you start, you have to commit. So I went with it. <laughs> my mother got so pissed off, she kept hitting me in the head with an aspen bottle she had in her hand. Uh, it was her thing to hit you with whatever she had in her hand. I can I can relate. Okay, okay. I take the, sh- the shoe off and, mm-hmm, and whack mm-hmm. you. Or if she's cooking spaghetti, my mom would hit me with the wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> she was saying I paid 1200 bucks to fix the tooth you, you, <laughs> you chipped while looking at your own asshole <laughs> why would i let you go to the library uh that is why jokes for the rest of the family come in let's uh like do you oh. think you have a book about asshole farting <laughs> where would you find that why would you go to the library to learn about it <laughs> uh all with very deep italian accents it's been 10 years now and my mom isn't mad about it anymore but That's i still funny. laugh and tell people about it all the time if any of your friends listen to your podcast they will know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> if you choose to talk about it either way have a great day keep up the good work you guys are killing it i listen to all of your podcasts oh, and we'll continue nice. Let's all work to do less dumb shit. Joe in New Orleans. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Oh, man, good. New Orleans. Good yeah. for you, man. Smashing. New yeah. Buttholes. Nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. Nothing, man. They're, they're always always going to get you. <laughs> and we got one more for junk mail. Okay. And this was sent our way by dummy uh, <laughs> dumb, dummy Joe again. Uh, it's uh, He says, hello, Horsecock and Fred. All your talk this week of lawnmowers... And and, uh, and and Fred's repeatedly advancing age reminded me of a story of a family friend. 
to, to set the stage, he's an older guy who made somewhere in the low eight-figure mark after selling some kind of software in his early 90s. He also looks exactly like the character Bobby from Sons of Anarchy. Okay. Which, oh, okay. you know, just yeah, full. I know Bobby. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah hair, yeah, big character. beard. Yep. Okay, so being fully retired, young, he fills his hours pretty much, you know, whatever he wants, however he wants to do it. His main passion is smoking weed and mowing his lawn. <laughs> he has a huge backyard that goes right up to the edge of the Columbia River and absolute top-of-the-line riding lawnmower. Well, one day he was distracted by a blue herring or a sandhill crane, mothman, jersey devil, whatever it was. Right, right. And he spontaneously, you know, bird watching. He drove the lawnmower, lawnmower off the edge of his property and into the river. <laughs> in, in response, <laughs> his wife told him that he's not allowed to smoke pot and mow the lawn anymore. Fair. Cut to 15 years later, <laughs> she's given up on him mowing without smoking, but they have compromised and he is now required to wear a life jacket when he mows <laughs> the lawn. <laughs> in case he falls in the river again. That's great. <laughs> That visual kills me. Yeah, Super just, old dude. Like, with a life jacket. Fully clothed with a life jacket. Uh, on a riding lawnmower. <laughs> modern problems require modern solutions. Maybe <laughs> lawnmower flotation devices will prove more marketable than headlights. Sure. Okay. Okay. He said, sidebar, a loyal space lizard, dummy Amanda, is going through a really hard time uh, right now. She's a fantastic, fantastic friend, loyal listener. She has a family member who's been given a limited amount of time to live. <sighs> And she's helping her family with all the arrangement, arrangements of being around a daughter of the year. Uh, if we could collectively let her know that you can do it, dummy. I'm sure that would bring a smile to her face during this hard time. May all your gas cans <laughs> be near fire forever and always. <laughs> Joe DeMeo from the Broham Pro Podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Joe's yeah. a really good guy. Yeah, yeah another sure. Joe. So, and yeah, he said, P.S., you're welcome for the, long, Joe. for the long email. Yeah, it's a different, <laughs> different Joe. Uh, Joe's great. Yeah. Joe's great. And Amanda, yeah. Uh, you know, good yeah, luck. Sorry, Amanda. Yeah, yeah. yeah best of luck and uh, sorry you're having a tough time. Right. So there we go. That was Junk Mail. I liked it. Let's wrap up this fucking show. That was a fun show. That was a great show. As always, thanks to Zach Cohen for creating some of the custom music beds for the show. Got Logan and Kate at Spicy Club, the Keith, pumping out the best merch. Again, we just dropped some new merch mm -hmm. last week. Go check it out right now at badmagicproductions.com or iswedumb.com. Zach Flannery, thanks for producing and directing the show. Instagram <laughs> Instagram and Facebook at Is We Dumb YouTube channel Bad Magic Productions rate and review us wherever you listen to this podcast do, we yeah. are you know we are well over 1300 and climbing uh, mm -hmm. I know on Apple Podcasts yeah. I think I might have said 1500 last week so I lied to you unless we're, unless we're there now by the time you hear this episode <laughs> um, yeah and hopefully you feel less dumb now than you did Absolutely. when we started the show Absolutely yeah thanks for continuing to listen and tell your friends uh, we have a lot of fun doing this podcast Yeah we have a blast 11, sh 11 shows about in the bag you ready to to close this thing out? I'm ready. I'm All ready. Right. Wow. Neat fact. Wow. Neat fact. I hope you think about this one. I hope it haunts your dreams. Okay. It won't. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and bring it up, Zach. The average cumulus cloud, which is that nice, white, fluffy kind yeah. you see on a Sunday, or a sunny day, weighs an incredible 1.1 million pounds. That hurts my head. To try and... what? Wow. What? How's it? It's so fluffy. I want to eat it. I don't think about clouds having weight. I know. I never have. It floats. How could it? Anyway. Oh, boy. That's what, that's what Wow Neat Fact is all about. Blowing your fucking mind.